The reasons why people become resistant to narcissists. Hello everyone. We are again on this YouTube channel. This channel is designed to unveil the mysteries of narcissism, empowering you to stand against it. Remember, the more you engage, the more you learn, the better choices you can make for yourself. Today, I'm going to address a fascinating inquiry. But before I start the video, I would love to know your opinions on it. Have you ever met someone who seems resistant to narcissists, someone who is not disturbed by them? Because that's the topic we are going to address in this video. The question is, are there individuals who are genuinely resistant to narcissists? Before we delve into that, and again, leave a comment if you know someone like that. Hit that like button, give us that thumbs up if you enjoy this video, subscribe, and make sure to read the comments. They're worth checking out every day. Also, hit that notification bell to stay updated. But let's tackle this question. Are there people who are genuinely resistant to narcissists? If there was a pill for that, I bet I would be a very affluent woman. This is an intriguing question that my clients have brought up, demonstrated, and many people have inquired about. I've received numerous emails asking this question. I'm pretty sure if there was a magic pill or perhaps a vaccine that could make you resistant to narcissists, many of you would be more than willing to try it, especially those of you who still have to deal with narcissists in your daily life, and they really weigh heavily on you. The concept of being resistant to narcissists is a phenomenon I've observed a few times. There are people who are not narcissistic or not completely narcissistic who simply do not let narcissists affect them. They might be working with a narcissist, they might have a narcissistic parent, or they might have a narcissistic partner, and it simply doesn't affect them. They will tell their partner to back off, and if they don't, they'll leave. They shrug off a troublesome colleague and don't let it interfere with their work. They find a way to converse with a difficult parent, and it doesn't bother them. It's quite fascinating to witness. So, what exactly is happening here? What is the unique trait that these individuals possess, which enables them to navigate their way around narcissists, without being adversely affected? Let me begin with a caveat. Some of these individuals, who seem to be resistant to narcissists, may occasionally exhibit enabling behavior, show signs of gaslighting, or even display mild narcissistic traits. They have a tendency to downplay your issues with the narcissist, and they might not confront the narcissist, allowing them to continue their usual antics. However, this doesn't seem to bother the individual who appears to be resistant. But this is not always the case. The truth is, they are not always enablers, nor are they necessarily narcissistic. They are just not disturbed by the narcissists. So, what is their secret? Once you know it, you'll understand it. Their secret is so straightforward that you might be skeptical. I can almost foresee you rolling your eyes as you read this. But it truly is this simple. They do not take the narcissist's nonsense personally. They don't consider it a personal attack. I have worked with clients who had very toxic parents and difficult pasts. They've dealt with toxic colleagues, they've had toxic partners, and they were okay. They were not bewildered, they were not filled with self-doubt, they weren't obsessively thinking about it. They just didn't take it personally. As I mentioned, I've worked with quite a few clients like this. Now, they are rare, very rare. Such people generally have a few common characteristics. Firstly, people who are resistant to narcissists tend to be confident and self-assured about their own abilities. They have a clear understanding of their strengths and weaknesses. Furthermore, they usually engage in activities they love, either as part of their job or as hobbies, or both. This gives them a sense of self-assuredness. Secondly, they don't take the narcissist's behavior personally, reiterating the point I made earlier. They are capable of acknowledging that the narcissist is indeed a troublemaker. They can say, yes, he's an absolute jerk. She is a complete pain in the neck. But that's their problem, not mine. So, even when the narcissist says mean, gaslighting, invalidating, outrageous things, they just tend to shrug it off. They simply don't make it their problem. The third characteristic observed in people who are resistant to narcissists is their strong ability to retain their personal perspective. Even when they are subjected to gaslighting, 
they simply brush it off, saying, all right, that's your viewpoint. I have my own, and we'll just have to agree to disagree. The fourth characteristic of people resistant to narcissists is their ability to establish and uphold boundaries, perhaps because they are largely unaffected by the narcissist's negative behavior. They know when to end things, they are prepared to leave social gatherings early, resign from jobs, choose to stay in hotels rather than at the narcissist's residence, and they exhibit a remarkable knack for saying no and sticking to their boundaries. Interestingly, the fifth characteristic is that they may not even recognize that the narcissist is indeed a narcissist, which is a critical point worth noting. It's not as if they've all sought to educate themselves about toxic personality traits, as you are doing by viewing this YouTube channel and reading related content. There's a sense of balance in people who are resistant to narcissists, and by balance, I mean they're the type of people who can get along with anyone. They simply shrug it off and say, I'm not going to let them bring me down. These occasionally charming and relatively uncommon calm individuals in our society often have their own challenging histories. It's not as though these narcissist-resistant individuals necessarily come from secure, loving, safe environments. They often hail from very narcissistic families and have had quite difficult life experiences. Interestingly, it's as though they practice radical acceptance without even realizing it's a concept. They don't engage in feudal conflicts, they don't take things personally, and they don't allow themselves to be victimized. They might even make excuses for the narcissist, which is interesting because you might hear them say, oh, that person, he doesn't realize what he's saying. However, they often follow this up with, but their words were not acceptable. So they're not entirely enablers. At times, they are able to reinforce this by saying that it's not acceptable, even if they can't control themselves. These resistant individuals can successfully navigate both sides. They understand that the narcissist is wholly unaware of themselves, and they can identify the narcissist's behavior as problematic, particularly to those who are harmed by the narcissist. They can acknowledge that, yes, this isn't right. People who are generally resistant to narcissists tend to be quite relaxed. Often, things just don't upset them. So, as I mentioned, it's not necessarily that they comprehend narcissism. It's that it simply doesn't affect them. They don't usually take everything personally. And what's even more intriguing, and this is crucial, they don't attempt to alter the narcissist. They genuinely don't mind that the narcissist won't change. And they don't always end the relationship. It's not like these people are always saying, no, I'm cutting all contact. It's the realization that narcissists won't change, and for whatever reason, this doesn't trouble them. Now, when their narcissistic relationship becomes more abusive and potentially escalates into violence, the fact is that the odds are high that the resistant people left those relationships long before it reached that point. But if it does occur, the resistant person is likely to step back, acknowledge violence as never acceptable, and dismiss the narcissistic person as having a problem that is not their own. So, what can we learn from these resistant individuals who seem to be immune to narcissism in our midst? First principle, don't take narcissists' actions or words personally. These resistant individuals possess an exceptional ability to dismiss the narcissist's behavior and remarks with a simple shrug. They say, this isn't about me, it's about them, not me. They understand that the narcissist's actions and words reflect the narcissist's own issues, not a judgment or criticism of them. This perspective allows them to maintain their emotional balance and not be drawn into the narcissist's drama. Second principle, never attempt to change the narcissist. These resistant individuals accept the narcissist as they are, understanding that change must come from within the person themselves. Because they don't take the narcissist's actions personally, they are rarely disturbed by them. This doesn't mean they approve or enjoy the narcissist's behavior, but they hold firm to the belief, I'm not the one who is going to change this situation. They understand that it's not their responsibility or within their power to change the narcissist. Third principle, prioritize self-preservation. Resistant individuals have a strong psychological core and a healthy sense of self, which enables them to focus on their own happiness and well-being. They seek out the positive aspects of their lives, even when the narcissist is causing chaos and disruption. 
They do what makes them happy and find the good in their environment, not allowing the narcissist's actions to overshadow their personal joy. Furthermore, if the relationship with the narcissist becomes too toxic, they establish boundaries or withdraw entirely. However, this decision isn't made from a place of intense sorrow or distress, but rather from a calm and resolute position. They simply step back, declaring, I can't do this anymore. By doing this, they protect their mental and emotional health from the damaging effects of the narcissist's behavior. The fourth trait that characterizes people who are resistant to narcissists is that they are not governed by fear. Many people, perhaps the majority, live in constant dread of the narcissist's explosive anger. This does not refer to instances where the narcissist becomes physically violent, but rather to their intimidating, psychological rage. However, those who are resistant to narcissists do not succumb to this fear. They maintain an attitude of indifference towards the narcissist's temper tantrums, viewing them as absurd displays of uncontrolled emotions. If the narcissist starts to shout, these resistant individuals simply remove themselves from the situation. They refuse to tolerate being yelled at and will not engage in a shouting match. The fifth attribute of those resistant to narcissists is their ability to recognize when it's time to cut ties. Certain relationships with narcissists are simply untenable. Those who are resistant to narcissists have an uncanny ability to identify when a relationship has reached this point. They know when to step back or adopt a gray rock method, which involves minimal interaction with the narcissist. Intriguingly, resistant people rarely sever all contact with the narcissist unless the narcissist initiates it. These individuals have a remarkable ability to let go and move on without the emotional turmoil that typically accompanies the end of a relationship. Finally, the sixth characteristic of people resistant to narcissists is their healthy sense of self-worth that isn't tied to the narcissist. One of the most destructive aspects of a relationship with a narcissist is the formation of a trauma bond and the emergence of codependency. In such relationships, the partner often derives their self-esteem or sense of identity from the challenging task of managing or taming the narcissist. However, those resistant to narcissists do not form such bonds. They do not feel the need to control the narcissist or prove their worth by enduring the narcissist's behavior. They are content with who they are, independent of the narcissist's influence. This healthy self-esteem acts as a shield, protecting them from the narcissist's attempts to undermine their confidence and self-worth. People resistant to narcissists do get worn out by their antics. However, they are adept at self-care and know when to step back to recharge. For instance, they might decline a social invitation after a day of enduring the narcissist's mood swings, or retire early to avoid evening disputes. They understand the toll these interactions take but handle it in a pragmatic way, akin to a new parent ensuring they get enough sleep. Although resistant people acknowledge that relationships with narcissists are unhealthy, they don't let it crush their spirit. They accept the futility of trying to reach out or expend energy on the narcissist. Being resistant to narcissists, therefore, is about being kind to oneself. It involves not taking the narcissist's behavior personally, leading a fulfilling life, and nurturing a strong sense of self. It's about relinquishing others' expectations and not sacrificing oneself to appease an impossible person. The day you stop caring about the narcissist's opinion and start focusing on your own well-being could be a significant step towards freedom. Narcissistic relationships can be challenging, and while full resistance might be unattainable for many, we can certainly learn from those who manage it well. A key trait of resistant people is their ability to not get swayed or overwhelmed by the enablers or those who gaslight on behalf of the narcissist. These resistant individuals, like anyone else, aim to blend in. They have a strong sense of self and can discern that the narcissist's behavior is not beneficial, despite what enablers might say. They stand their ground, saying, no, it's not okay, and it's not good for me, and distance themselves from the narcissist. Their approach is straightforward. People resistant to narcissists are unique, often exuding a zen-like calm. Interestingly, some may display a hint of narcissism themselves, exhibiting a somewhat superior or aloof attitude. They come across as slightly snob sh with an I-can't-be-bothered demeanor. Those resistant to narcissism aren't necessarily perfect, they simply handle it differently. 
They don't let things get to them and manage to maintain a somewhat detached attitude. However, this isn't a goal everyone can or should aspire to. Many of us, due to our unique wiring, may still find ourselves affected by narcissists. For instance, I still get upset and need to vent my frustrations. However, observing and learning from people who are resistant can provide valuable insights. Even if you can't achieve full resistance, these lessons can help lessen the impact when encountering narcissism. Thank you for watching this video. If it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy our community, subscribe to this channel and ring the bell. Don't forget to check the comments for more insights. If you have ideas for future videos, please leave a comment. Goodbye for now.